So Mark, thank you for joining us at Chief Data and Analytics Officer 2018. Could you start with uh, giving us a little bit of background about yourself and what you do at the First National Bank of South Africa? Thank you very much. My name is Mark Nasila. I work for the First National Bank in South Africa. The First National Bank is a subsidiary of the First Run Group uh, in South Africa. I'm the head of advanced analytics in the bank and my main function is to run a central team that collaboratively work with different product areas as well as businesses within the bank to derive uh, value from data, solve different problems, as well as um, make sure we use our data to create efficiencies in the organization, increase revenue, and uh, cut operat operational costs. So now we're into February, what key things do you think will come to the forefront in data and analytics in 2018? My biggest one is driving an outcome-based analytics strategy. In the past few years, we've been speaking about the culture of data and analytics, managing data, governing data. And a lot of organizations have invested a lot of money in platforms, analytics, uh, software employed a lot of data scientists and at this time we're keen to derive value and show value from all these initiatives. What would you say are and have been the key barriers and challenges in data and analytics um, in 2018? The culture around the value from data, understanding the real value of data and tying it into the business strategy. So initially data was seen as a, just an enabler, but right now data is the biggest asset of any organization as it's used to quantify the risk involved in what the business is offering. It's uh, used to inform the, the business as well as the the, those driving the strategy of the organization. And uh, it's used to actually enable an organization realize its main objectives. How far into your data and analytics strategy are you within your organization? So it varies depending on what business problems we're solving. So we have a very traditional credit uh, foundation. So we're very mature there. In fact, we're already um, driving advanced real-time capabilities around the use of data to um, assess customers for credit risk, market products to customers at the right time. We, we've also done very well in using data and analytics to make sure we're compliant with regulatory risk uh, requirements. Not just being compliant, but also being accurate in assessing those risks, such as money laundering and counter-terrorist financing. Uh, there are new requirements now from regulators, such as common reporting standards, um, we, we're in, we, we have international offerings, so we're also subject to the GDPR requirements, mm -hmm. which uh, we're making sure we use our data and analytics to show that we are compliant. What are the primary objectives for your data and analytics strategy within your organisation for the coming year? So to us, data is information that represents what, uh, who our clients are, what they prefer, who they're going to be, both in the short term and long term future. And we're using data to basically build trust with our clients, uh, making sure we offer them products at the right time in line with what they need. We're using data to create efficiencies of how we operationally run processes that enable the customers use our products. We're using data to uh, manage and how we engage with our customers, make them easy for them to use our products, as well as uh, um, use the processes we've set up for them to transact, for example, with our online platforms, with our app, uh, as well as our customer interactive um, um, platforms like the chat. We're also using data and analytics to protect our customers making sure we score transactions for fraud, making sure we score customers to understand what's the intention of why they want to be in the organization. 
because we want uh, to protect the bank, the integrity and the reputation of the bank. So think about your neighborhood. You stay in your neighborhood because your neighborhood is safe. It's got a reputation of being safe. So we want to use data to make sure our bank is that bank where everyone wants to come to because um, it's a safe place to bank with. What software tools, platforms and services will you be evaluating in the next 6 to 12 months? So we've always interacted with different vendors mm. to try and understand what they offer that could tie into what we're trying to achieve with our data strategy. At the moment, we have a foundation of SaaS analytics, which is our main analytics platform. There's a lot of work going on with um, analytics in R, which is an open source to provide us flexibility. We also have um, a lot of analysts in the bank using Python. And the solutions are the same. It depends on what they prefer. But we have our Hadoop cluster, which is used to manage our data. We have some IBM products, which we're using for making sure we aggregate big data sets, as well as um, automate complex algorithms. For example, the non-parametric models, the random forests, which are very difficult to actually operationalize when you do not have so much high computing power. What do you think is the key thing or things that have revolutionized the data and analytics industry so far? The key one was making sure we structure and put together a collaborative um, culture that makes everyone understand that they are contributing towards the same cause in data and analytics for the bank so that we do not have a silo system which kind of wastes a lot of resources and time for the bank. Um, by creating that centralized culture, we've had almost a, a perfect value proposition from where we, 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 and we define our business problems, um, define what sources of data we need to solve those problems, have different analysts work together to solve those problems, and also have um, an environment where we can run proof of concepts to show that there is value and also involve the right IT uh, and platform systems people to drive the implementation of this project so that we can realize the value quicker. And lastly, finish by having a feedback loop to businesses to show the value that has been generated from these initiatives. How do you think the data and analytics landscape will change over, say, the next year, two years, and even into 2020 and beyond? I would say um, one of the biggest changes will be the time it takes to gain value. For any organization, uh, in the past few years, we've realized events change so much faster. Uh, technology is changing so much faster, improving, this, the computing power is, is, is becoming more aggressive. And um, so it should take much shorter to actually show and implement value from analytics as compared to what we have. And this is basically attributed to the fact that um, the problems we're solving are also changing much faster than we think in fact, um, if you delay, the problem you're solving will be a different problem. So your solution might be a bit redundant by the time you're actually implementing it. So we might have to speed up uh, on the time it takes to actually implement some of these initiatives. Why did you choose to enter the data and analytics industry? I've always had a passion for using data to solve problems. When I was, since when I was young. In fact, I wanted to become an actuary. But um, I took the path to pursue a degree in statistics, and I did a PhD in statistics, which has given me the ability to create a connection between real-life problems and data and algorithms used to, sol to actually solve these problems. And throughout this journey, data gives me an opportunity to actually quantify and measure um, my involvement with using all these initiatives to solve different problems. 
If you were granted one wish to change something within the data and analytics industry, what would that wish be? I wouldn't call it necessarily change. I would um, call it enhancement. Mm -hmm. I would enhance uh, the ability to collaborate and make sure different parties in the data and analytics value chain work together to realize um, uh, value much quicker. And um, I think if a lot of organizations are to adopt that type of culture, they will benefit more because what is holding back a lot of organizations is the lack of a culture that allows people to work together and let everyone contribute in, in, in this whole journey of data and analytics. What has been your toughest lesson and biggest challenge to date within data and analytics? You need to work with people. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that you're not contributing. Uh, what you need to understand that your contribution works together with contributions from other people to give a bigger value in the whole process. So it's essential that one sets their mind towards working and collaborating with other areas because no one can do this by themselves. As well as the success will come from one's ability to venture into a journey of where you don't know. You can't succeed when you keep doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we need to equip ourselves with a mindset that we're venturing into an area we don't know. And that's what in is innovation, innovation is all about. Why did you decide to be a keynote speaker at Chief Data and Analytics Officer 2018? In this space, you succeed through learning. And uh, I've come to this event for a couple of years now, and um, I've always learned a lot, especially from the speakers who are around, the people who, are, who attend the conference are the ones who are involved in these processes. Um, it's difficult to learn from people who are selling the product, but this event brings experts. It brings um, people with backgrounds from an involvement perspective. So you learn a lot from their failures, from their successes, and that whole experience and feedback, we use them to actually improve on what we're doing. How important to you are events like Chief Data and Analytics Officer 2018? And how important is it to bring the data and analytics industry together at events like this? It is just basically one from a knowledge sharing perspective. Uh, a lot of people struggle within the organization because they are responsible for the whole initiative. But um, through an event like this, people are able to interact and share the technical issues, share the cultural problems that are stopping them from progressing much faster. But also to get buy-in of the risks one should take to be able to succeed, because some of the guys have already taken those risks. They've succeeded, they've um, learned from them, and those lessons um, are important because uh, they kind of enable you shorten how much investment you would make you know, in order to succeed going forward. So Mark, thank you very much indeed for talking to me this afternoon and answering my questions and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for having me yeah, and your you. time as well.